This short guide will get your Audacity audio sounding perfect in seconds. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video for the best part about Audacity macros. Here's how to do it. Hello my wonderful voiceover artists, my name is Bizarre from Bizarre Studios and I'm going to quickly show you how to set up a macro in Audacity so you never have to set through editing again. For the most part, if this video helps you in any way, please consider subscribing, liking the video, and commenting down below with any questions you may have. Anyways, that's enough talking, let's go ahead and get to work. So starting from scratch, let's open up Audacity. If you want to know more about setting up your tracks and more details on the effects we're going to use, I suggest you watch my previous Audacity tutorial that's linked on the screen and in the video description. But if you don't want to do that, we're going to go ahead and do a project rate of 44,100 Hertz and record on a mono track. To make sure it's mono, click into audio setup here at the top, recording channels, the number one for mono recording. This is good for recording a single voice, such as with a voiceover, but if you have multiple people or audio inputs, I would suggest using a stereo track. But for this tutorial, let's go ahead and stick to mono. And for reference in this video, I'm using my USB Blue Snowball microphone as opposed to my XLR since the USB is more common. Though if you do want some higher quality voiceovers, I do suggest getting an XLR at some point. And as of February 27th, 2023, this is what Audacity looks like with the newest 3.24 update. Anyways, once we've got our track, we need to record a little bit of audio with about 3-4 to four seconds of silence at the beginning and at the end. Hello, my name is Bazaar and this is a recording test. Other tutorials may suggest you use the noise reduction effect as part of your macro, but I disagree. Unless you have a perfect studio recording area, chances are the background noises in your audio will change from recording to recording, meaning there's not really an end-all method of noise reduction, and it should be tackled on a case-by-case -case basis. If you don't care about the noise reduction, feel free to skip to the next section of the video. So let's go ahead and start with that. We're going to highlight that quiet bit we left at the beginning by clicking and dragging the mouse over that area. With that bit of audio selected, let's head up to the Effects tab and click Noise Removal and Repair, then click into Noise Reduction. In the most recent update, Audacity changed how the Effects tab looks and it's been throwing me off, not gonna lie. Anyways, in the Noise Reduction box, do not do anything except click Get Noise Profile. After you click that, it'll close out on its own. After it closes, double click the audio track or hold down the control key plus the A key to select the entire track. Then go back to effects, noise removal and repair, and back into noise reduction. Make sure your settings are like mine, but don't be afraid to tweak them based on your own personal needs. But I have a 12 decibel noise reduction with a sensitivity of six and the frequency smoothing bands at three. And the noise radial option at the bottom is selected to reduce. After making sure your settings are correct, hit OK. OK, now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and get to the fun stuff. Not far from the Effects tab is the Tools tab. Let's go ahead and click into that, then into Macro Manager. Yours will probably be empty, but as you can see, I've created a few already for various projects. What we're going to do here is make a macro, or a preset, to do all of our tedious editing for us. And the best part is, once these macros are set up, you'll never have to mess with it again. And as a bonus, it's super simple to set up. Let's begin by selecting new here in the middle to create a new macro. You can name it whatever you would like, but I suggest something memorable, such as best VO settings as I'm using here. You'll start off with the end command, which tells the macro that its job is done. But this doesn't really do anything on its own, so let's add some more meat to the sandwich. Over on the right side of the box, click Insert. This will open up a list of all available commands in Audacity, but we're going to use the settings that I showed in the last video as a baseline for this particular macro. Scroll in the box until you find the Normalize command. Click on it once to select it, then go to the top of the box where it says Edit Parameters. This is where we can change the settings of the effect. We'll use the same settings as my last video, making sure that the first two boxes are checked with a negative 1.0 decibel given here, 
and the third box left unchecked. Once these are correct, hit apply, then OK. Next, we'll go back to insert and find compressor. Click on edit parameters and copy my settings. We have negative 18 for the threshold, negative 40 for the noise floor, 2.5 to 1 for the ratio, an attack time of 1.80 or as close to that as you can get, and a release time of 11. The first box should be checked and the second box unchecked. Also, if I'm giving these numbers too fast, please feel free to pause the video or check the description for the settings. But once those are correct, again hit apply, then OK. Click insert again, then we'll do the filter curve EQ command. Hit edit parameters, presets and settings over on the left, then factory presets, then treble boost. Leave everything as is, then hit apply and OK. We'll go back to insert again, filter curve EQ again, edit parameters, presets and settings, factory settings, then this time we'll do bass boost. Leave everything else alone, hit apply and OK. Finally, for the last step, we're going to do normalize one more time. So back to insert, find the normalize command, double check that the parameters are the same but they shouldn't have changed since the last time you edited them, so you shouldn't need to mess with those settings again. But then hit apply and OK. Hit the save option over on the right of the box and you're good to go. Now, whenever you want to use this macro, all you have to do is select your track or a portion of your track like so, then go to the tools tab, apply macro, and click on the one we just named. And just like magic, all of your editing work is done for you. Hello. My name is Bizarre, and this is a recording test. And here's the amazing part. Let's say we just finished the project we're working on, and we close Audacity. From now on, when we open it and have some audio we want to edit, this is a new audio recording. The macro will still be there with no more setup required. So though it takes a minute to set up the first time, every time after that, it's literally just the click of a button. There's some even more amazing things you can do with macros, but that'll be for a future video. Anyways, I think that just about does it for this tutorial. Please subscribe and leave a like if this video helped in any way, as that does help my channel grow. If you have any questions or are looking for a different type of guide, please leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you ASAP. On this channel, I'll be doing more tutorials with Audacity, OBS, and other programs and software to help the voiceover and content creating community. Next time, we'll probably take a look at some beginner-friendly streaming software. But until then, this has been Bizarre from Bizarre Studios, and I'll catch you in the next guide. See you later.